This week in 3D Archery, we're going to discuss a very interesting bow. It is the first mass-produced takedown bow. And it's made of fiberglass. Hey everybody, welcome to 3D Archery. Craig here. All right, Ben Pearson, model 304, fiberglass takedown bow. This is an interesting story, and I hope it's one you'll enjoy. So how did I come across this bow? Well, I was contacted by a viewer. His name is Todd. Never give last names for OPSEC reasons. And he's a Fred Bear bow guy, and he got this somehow. And he thought of me. He wanted to know if I wanted it. He didn't really want it. You know, I was indifferent to it. I thought about it and I go, you know what, yeah, I'll take it. Mainly because I needed content. <laughs> and uh, I don't like taking things for free. So I said, how about if we make a trade? I'll send you some targets, you send me the bow. And man, thank God I did. Because I found the backstory in this bow to be very interesting. And I hope you'll find it that way too. Mm -hmm. Now I've heard of these bows, never shot them. And they are pretty rare. And they call, people are charging some money for them, so there's some value to them. And the back of my own story on these are, let's go back in time, 1954, right? That's when the first one came out. Now, back at that time, most bows were all wooden bows, made of lemon wood, yew, massage, stuff like that. And the companies are experimenting with different ways to make it better, to make them more weather resistant. You know, that seems to be a thread here is those wood bows get affected by weather. Now, if you live in the deep south or a tropical environment or the subtropics, you know what I'm talking about. Humid, hot, rain. Things that wood just doesn't like. Now, back in 1954, besides the wood, the custom Boyers and Fred Bear was offering fiberglass. Bear called theirs the famous glass powered. Now, you gotta remember about this. Custom Boyers are up here. They have next to no part of the market. Fred Bear was here. You know, he wasn't for the average archer. But down here, that's the mass market. And this is what they wanted to get. Fred Bear was getting his, but not everybody wants a Fred Bear or spend the money for one. And the custom warriors, is what most people don't want to spend for. Right? And you got to think of it like Honda. There's Honda, then there's Acura, there's Toyota, then there's Lexus, there's uh, Chevy. Then there's Cadillac. And that's what it was. You know, a Honda and a um, Acura can be the same body, different names, but different, you know, upgrades to it to make it better. So that's what they're looking at. They're trying to figure out how to get in and penetrate this market with a durable bow that was more durable than just plain wood. Now, some, some of the thoughts at this time, which I found through an awesome source, uh, Archery Vintage and Traditional, the website, which is right here. Tiny, go on there, they got these catalogs, and it is a wealth of information. Now, Fleetwood offered an aluminum bow since 1948. That was their answer, right? Even Hoyt had a metal bow, and this was imported from England, so it was special. But no one at that time had a fiberglass bow, and no one at that time offered a takedown bow, and so nobody offered a combination of the two. And that's where this bow comes in. Ben Pearson was the first person to make a fiberglass bow mass market and a takedown bow. And he combined them together. And this was a big deal because takedown, easier travel. Fiberglass doesn't get affected by the weather. So did this bow make an impact? Well, the answer to that is a resounding yes. And why do I say that? Because within two years of the introduction of this, Herders was offering composite Turkish bows made with farben gloss. It's not really fiberglass, it's this right here like I have. It is a version of it, farben gloss is I think German for fiberglass, but it's slightly different in the manufacture. Fleetwood was offering fiberglass bows. Indian was offering fiberglass bows. And in 1958, Fleetwood even offered a fiberglass takedown bow. Now amazingly, Bear Archery 
They didn't join the fiberglass scene till 1961. 1954. The bow shows up for the first time in the catalog. It's one of three takedown fiberglass bows. The 302, which is listed as a five foot bow for junior archers and ladies. The 304, which this video is about, which is five feet four inches, doesn't list who it's for. And the 306, which is five feet six inches. And again, it's not listed who it's for. The bow is listed in the catalog is fiberglass molded around a solid wood core. Gives excellent weight distribution and added cast. Extra light, actually weighing less than one and a half pounds. So there it is, it is a wood core molded around fiberglass. Again, five foot four inches. The weights, it comes in 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50 pounds. It says weights at 28 inches, but it can go up to 30 inches. So that's probably the draw length. Draw length is 30 inches. It also says in here the handle was personally designed by Ben Pearson himself. Claims it was scientifically designed for extra strength and wear take up, which positively eliminates objectionable noises. This revolutionary design includes an arrow rest. 1955. The bows are now endorsed by Howard Hill. And again, they're the first bows in the catalog. That shows you how important I thought these would be. It also says they're made with a wood core. They are now described as an excellent target, field, or hunting bow. Smooth and fast in action. Durable and graceful. Unaffected by weather. They're moderately priced and olive green in color. Again, they're five foot four inches takedown, full length, and each section they claim is two feet nine inches. The draw weight has changed now. It's offered from 30 to 75 pounds in five pound increments. Draw length is the same, 28 to 30. Now for the first time, it lists different finishes available. If your bow is 30 to 50 pounds, it can have a gloss finish. If it's 50 on up, it gets the non-gloss finish. Now they list the arrow rest as leather cushioned, suitable for left or right hand archers. The weight is now listed as two and a quarter pounds, whereas the year before, it said a pound and a half. 1956. The bows are now bumped to the second page by two new laminated takedown bows. There's no mention of the wood core, so by this time the wood, or sorry, the bow might have fully went fiberglass. Gone is the direct endorsement by Howard Hill, and its place is a general one. The draw weights change again. They now start at 40 pounds and end at 65 in five pound increments. It now states it's packed in a handy Swedeen bow case. I don't know what a Swedeen is. You know, a form of suede leather, man made, I guess, but that's what the handy case you get. It's also, for the first time it's mentioned, is a model 305. Described as identical features and a guarantee is above except for custom quality. In other words, the bows didn't pass the quality control, so they're marking them as a 305. So if you see a 305, you know, you got a second. 1957. The bows now drop back to page five. Shows you how fast it's fallen from grace. Behind a new center shot takedown design by Ben and two other takedowns introduced in 1956. Even the old Lemonwood bows are listed in front of it and there's no mention of Howard Hill. This catalog also sees the first introduction of the all glass jet bow series that would go on well into the 90s. It also got a totally new description. One of the finest hunting weapons ever built. Fast, powerful, accurate and beautiful. Silky smooth to handle without stack or jar. It is truly an archer's dream bow. Exceptionally rugged and durable. 
precision built by Ben Pearson of top quality fiberglass, it will give you accurate and dependable performance on your hunting trip, regardless of the adverse weather conditions. Length still 5 foot, five foot 4, draw weights remain the same, 40 to 65 in 5 pound increments, draw limits are the same, 20 to 30 inches. They dropped the weird word suedine, and now the case is just called a handy bow carrying case. Again, there's no mention of the wood core. And this is pretty neat. For 1957, I also have the price list. The bow retailed for 1995. <laughs> so I went on Google and I looked it up. Uh, adjusted for inflation. Well, it would be $197.33 in today's dollars. Yikes. Uh, the dealer net price was $11.97. For some reason, there's no mention of the Model 305. 1958. 1958 was the first year Ben Pearson put names on their bows. Before, it was all model numbers. Well, this year, the 304 fell even farther back in the catalog. It's now behind the famous Palomino, the Safari, the awesome Bushmaster, the Cobra, Cougar, Javelina, and Tiger. Most of those ones I just named are new bows. The 304 in 1958, they named it. It was named Panther. Draw weights were unchanged, 40 to 60 pounds in 5 pound increments. Draw length is unchanged, 28 to 30 inches. The description changes slightly. And it reads, a magnificent bow made of fiberglass that will give dependable performance regardless of adverse weather conditions. Fast, powerful, accurate, and beautiful. Silky smooth to handle, without stack or jar. Exceptionally rugged and durable. The Panther features the takedown handle for added convenience, plus handy carrying case. The leather covered grip and arrow rest for either left or right handed archers, an excellent hunting weapon. Now mysteriously, the Model 305 reappears in the catalog. 1959. The bow's gone. But it must be noted the Model 302 survives for another year as the Bobcat. But it too is gone by 1962.
you know, I can see why the 304 was so popular at first and why they thought it was groundbreaking. You know, down here in Louisiana, it's hot and humid year round. Bad for wood. Rain a lot, bad for wood. And it's a decent shooter. I mean, I'm amazed. Now, I don't do a whole lot of setups. This is the string that uh, Todd sent to me with it. I put it on there, let it stretch for a couple days. It's seven inches, right? Didn't have a knock point. Threw some arrows on, shut all my arrows, realized that my eastern axis, 600 spines with probably, it looks like a 145 green point, are flying the best. So that's what I went with. How did I set my knock? Well, I just put an arrow on there. Oopsie. Put an arrow on there and made it a little higher in the center. And that's it. I went out and shot it. And I had fun. Now, things that I found. Longbow grip, not the biggest fan of. Shelf, very small, easy for the air to fall off. And it's sort of over the years like rounded down. So it's not level, it's actually a downward slant. It's not a big deal. Um, <laughs> heavy Archer's Paradox, wasn't used to that. You can see by this picture right here. Practice range, first shot on 3D targets at 20 yards. One went wide, realized it, put it in the center. Then I shot at 30, one went wide. <laughs> <laughs> Realized what I was doing, put it in center. So when I'm shooting, I gotta remember that. I gotta have my arrows a little bit off to the side for the Archer's Paradox that's on this bow. All right, that's it. You know, the 304, I'm, like I said at the beginning, I understand now why it was so popular. This is a pretty sweet shooting little bow. One thing I forgot to mention was how smooth of a draw this thing has, and there's no hand shock. I mean, none. I am really surprised since I didn't take the time to set it up right. Right. That was a sweet shot. That's what I mean to think. It's a sweet shooter. I am so amazed at this thing. everybody there's my shooting I'm not showing you all of it we've seen the place before but I had an absolute blast shooting this thing I have to say it just took me totally by surprise I just slapped it together shot it picked an arrow it looked like good boom hit it 20 yards off I went and I had a good time um, not being cut to center threw me off a couple times because if I it changed my aiming I had to move my arrow over not, you know, not a big thing um, some things I didn't cover which we'll cover real quick the model number is on the lower limb here it's a decal the weight is right here this is 50 at 28 and then there's some engraving here which you can see here I'm really not sure what that means maybe it's just a production number or something like that they also have a Ben Pearson decal on the upper back now my bow somebody spray painted it right it was that tan slash olive drab color that's okay. I'm going to see if I can get that paint off of it. Clean it up. All right. Hits and misses. Come on. <laughs> Bow built in 1950-something. What can you say? But if you can get one of these, you're all in a part of archery history. This was the first mass-produced takedown bow. It was the first mass-produced fiberglass bow. And it was the first mass-produced fiberglass takedown bow. So it knocked three things out at once. Uh, didn't live up to the expectations because of the advancement and other stuff, but it shouldn't take it away from it. So it is a really unique piece of history here. Now, shooting it, this puppy was smooth. I was shocked at how easy it was. For 50 pounds, it felt like maybe 40-something. And I, I know the speeds didn't show as fast Man, those arrows were, they, they just looked like they'd be cooking to me. And I was using my, my 800s, and they were, they were honking. That, that was cool to me. Right? 
There's no hand shock. I mean, bang, I didn't even tune this thing. There's no hand shock. It was stable in my hand. And finally, it's portable. All right, it is portable. I mean, you can't beat, oops, you can't beat this for portability. I mean, it's simple. And that's what I love about it. All right, the misses. Well, misses are pretty simple. They're rare. And the people that have them, they want some money for it because they sort of know what they have. You know, being out of production since the 50s, you know, that's why, 70 years or so? Think about that. 70, 54, yeah, almost 70 years. So this baby's old. Uh, the other shooting thing that I didn't find the, the greatest was the, the rest. It's not level, it's slanted. So on something like this, it's slanted down. Um, you, that's probably in the video I learned to compensate. It wasn't a big, hard compensation. I just kept my finger on it till I drew, then I dropped my finger down. That was it. So there you have it, the Ben Pearson 304. Piece of archery history, which is now mine. I am so happy that I took this thing. I'm going to clean her up. Don't think I'm going to find me a suedeen uh, case, but I'm going to probably build one. And got me a cool bow to go out and play with. You know, I went out and shot it today. I might actually take it sometimes, go out and shoot some 3D courses with it. All right, there you have it. Another Ben Pearson bow. Little know about, which I think would be a great addition to your collection. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the website. Lots of stuff there. Always building it. Always adding to it. All right? Saw my 3D targets. Um, I love them. I make targets that I like, and I came up with a great one today. Um, there's a progressive commercial with the Angry Birds. And I thought, oh, an Angry Bird. Duh. You can roll it. You can throw it. Or I thought, maybe a crazy eight ball, huh? Roll it. Shoot it. Hang it. Chuck it up in the air. Shoot it. All different things. So that might be coming out here soon. All right. Sorry for the babbling. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time with an all-new episode. 3D Archery.